We are T-minus two minutes, T-minus two minutes until the WK27 demo launch. This launch will demonstrate the capabilities of the new engine from the EDB, the WK27, which is based on the H1 engine that was used in the Saturn 1H rocket that used to be the EDB's smallest rocket. This will be the mainstay rocket for the EDB for launching small payloads, uh, two to three tons to low Earth orbit. The EDB has not released any of the static fire footage for, from the testing of the WK-27. However, no incidents were reported and all the tests went nominally. Uh, unlike the WK-10, which had uh, serious testing incidents, the WK-27 doesn't have a very high chamber pressure and was more or less straightforward to test. Coming up on one minute. T-minus one minute until the WK-27 demo launch. This launch is carrying a payload that will attempt to approach Titan Station. Uh, it will not dock with the station, however, uh, the launch is completely automated using a KOS program and it will attempt to approach the station within 20 kilometers and simply demonstrate the cap that capability of this rocket and the programming. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and we have ignition and liftoff of the WK-27 demo launch, launching at night in order to make the rendezvous with Titan Station possible. Uh, you will notice the two Vernier rockets that are alongside the WK-27 engine and those provide roll assistance. You'll also note that the WK-27 engine does produce an oscillating thrust that is due to the programming, not due to anything intrinsic to the rocket. Uh, the engineers say that they will improve programming, but for now this will suffice. This will, this will serve to get the rocket into its intended orbit according to the engineers. We are at T plus 45 seconds, 4,100 meters in altitude, 210 meters per second in velocity. One minute into the launch, Mach 1 has been achieved. Two kilometers downrange, 7,800 meters in altitude. We have reached max Q, 11 kilometers in altitude. Rocket is proceeding nominally on its trajectory over the Atlantic. This new engine was developed using the proceeds from the sale of the Tarmos antimatter ship as well as some funds from Jebediah Kerman. So far the EDB has to be pleased with the results. The, the static testing on the ground had been successful without a hitch. And now at a chamber pressure of 850 PSI, this engine is delivering the expected thrust as well as performance. The cost of this launcher is $11.4 million, which means that at a two-ton payload, which is what it's carrying right now, it uh, can deliver $5,700 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. However, it is possible that this rocket will be able to lift three tons, in which case it will manage uh, $3,800 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. We are coming on 2 minutes and 30 seconds into the burn. 2 minutes and 30 seconds, 62 kilometers in altitude, 2,110 meters per second in velocity, and 79 kilometers downrange. Interestingly, a major cost for the launcher was the fairing. The custom fairing for this launcher was a whopping $1.885 million, and I'm sure the EDB will be wanting to cut down on the cost of that fairing in order to minimize launch costs. We're coming up on the end of the first day.
first stage away, and the second stage is lit. So successful separation of the first stage and the second stage proceeds now for six more minutes maximum. However, we're not expecting the full burn. As mentioned, the total possible payload for this rocket is three tons. It is only lifting two, and so it will burn short of its full six minutes. The rocket is now traveling in excess of 4,000 meters per second and more than 200 kilometers downrange, and we're currently waiting for payload fairing separation which should occur at an altitude of 120 kilometers. Okay, confirmation of payload fairing separation there. And it is worth mentioning that this is the WK-10 engine, however it's not the exact same engine that the EDB used on its previous launch, the WK-10 engine demo flight. And that is because it was decided that even though the WK-10 1800 PSI version uh, had serious heating issues on the ground, it was serviceable in flight. Uh, and this is thanks to in-flight testing using aircraft. And it was decided that uh, it would be possible to use it on this flight and thereby boost the maximum payload for this rocket. And so there's the 1800 PSI version rather than the 1600 PSI version which means that it does get to fairly high temperatures but but according to engineers it will be safe and in fact it needs to be safe for an additional relight as it will shut down as it reaches its intended apoapsis uh, close to apoapsis and then relight at apoapsis in order to complete its orbit We are currently 5 minutes into the launch. The rocket is now 207 kilometers in altitude, 4,650 meters per second in surface velocity, and 735 kilometers downrange. So far, the EDB's goal to reduce launch costs has been wildly successful. Compared to the Saturn 1H, which had an H1 engine at its base, which launched at $20,000 per kilogram, this is a magnificent improvement, uh, almost fourfold with this launch and possibly fivefold with a heavier payload. And so the EDB is well on its way to controlling costs and becoming competitive in the race for uh, launch contracts. It still hasn't uh, gotten any contracts for these new launchers because, of course, they are untested and many possible contracts are going to competitors with more tried and true launchers. Speaking of which, the WK-27 engine does compare very favorably to the Merlin 1D from SpaceX. Its ISP is less than the Merlin 1D, uh, more comparable to the Merlin 1C there as we get new telemetry data, 6 minutes 15 seconds in, 243 kilometers in altitude, 5,380 meters per second, 1,143 kilometers down range and continuing along the nominal flight path. But the uh, WK-27 has a uh, greater thrust than the Merlin 1D and so fewer of them would be required for a large launch vehicle similar to the Falcon 9 and so perhaps the EDB will be looking to clustering the engines to make a larger launcher than this one that we see here which simply has one engine at each of the stages. The Merlin 1D, of course, achieves its high thrust weight ratio and high efficiency thanks to uh, high chamber pressure, much higher than the Merlin 1C had, and there is expectation that the EDB will attempt to uprate its WK-27 in order to make a similar improvement and follow in the footsteps of SpaceX on that. However, we will see whether they can achieve that improved performance or not. For now though, things are looking up. It's uh, amazing to reflect how far the EDB has fallen since it, the heady days of launching the larger rockets like the Saturn 9 with its 20 ton payload and the Saturn C3X uh, with its phenomenal payload. But uh, the EDB continues to plug away and making itself leaner, meaner and fit for the new era of space competition. We are coming up on 
six minutes into the flight and the engine is out second stage is out uh, we read the rocket at an orbit of 301 kilometers by 74 kilometers and so it is now coasting to apoapsis its uh, inclination is 28.55 degrees which is sufficient for uh, future rendezvous to the station we see it coasting here Okay, welcome back, and we are now 19 minutes into the flight, and awaiting relight. Alledge rockets firing, and relight at the second stage, and that is it. That is all it needed to do in order to get its orbit to 301 by 275. And there we have the separation of the test payload. The test payload is simply a supply caster, a docking port, and some RCS fuel, and it is awaiting uh, the proper phasing. It is not currently in the proper phasing for the station. It can't make a direct transfer, so it'll make uh, numerous orbits as it waits for the proper time to burn. All of this is automated, of course, using a KOS program, and it will then make a burn to approach closer to the station, matching orbits on one end. And here we see RCS thrusters firing in order to orient properly and then finally the RCS thrusters making the burn for rendezvous. This burn was successful bringing the craft to a closest approach distance of 11.91 kilometers from the station however the subsequent burn at that point at that closest approach in order to somewhat match velocity with the station not exactly match velocities to avoid any possibility of a disaster the craft was meant to get into a slightly different orbit but that burn failed and uh, so the craft was left in a lower orbit and so some programming work will have to take place and this was deemed a partial success only and so a full success for the test of the WK27 engine but only a partial success for the automation side of things and with that we'll say thank you for watching this presentation of the WK27 demo launch and we hope you enjoy this presentation and with that this is the EDB signing off